Ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha. Now, recently, we've seen a great many developers and moderators act in extremely terrible fashions when faced with the business aspect of customer complaint and fair critique of their products. We've seen some developers attack those critical of their games, sometimes to the point of harassment. We've seen people act like complete trolls, such as Berdiev of BC Interactive and the other four companies that he's named himself. And we've seen threats of legal action and generally just scummy behavior like Andrew Watt in his lame duck attempt at a game known as Blood of Old. And through all of this, we've seen that in order to get booted from Valve, it actually takes quite a lot to be able to accomplish that feat. The number that I've heard of who actually have managed it, I can count on one hand. Still, it can and will happen. The game on your screen is called Ivan vs. Nazi Zombies by Corporation F. It is an extremely basic first-person shooter created on the Game Guru engine that is about as horrible as you might expect. The game has a complete and total lack of anything resembling an AI, and the feature set is the core base system for Game Guru first-person shooters. Now, if you notice, the counters down in the lower left and right corners of the screen, those are the default counters on the Game Guru engine. This game is so terrible that you can literally go through the game having never picked up another weapon, and the only time you'll ever take damage is the one zone where the game starts you off with enemies so close that you activate the AI's attack protocol. Other than that, you're able to gun down all of your enemies at range without even having their AI tripped. It is even so pathetically pointless that the game can be completed in fewer than 10 minutes. Speedruns have completed the game in less than 3. I know this, and I've experienced this as I had actually reviewed this game in the past. But thankfully, you can't buy this game any longer. It's not available on the Steam storefront for purchase due to Valve terminating their relationship with this developer. This was due to the developer posting falsified reviews on their own game in order to misrepresent it to potential customers and boost sales. It was one of those few moments in history where I was actually happy to see Valve taking action about something. But the story doesn't end there, and we'll actually circle back to Ivan vs. Nazi Zombies in a moment. The next on your screen is Storm in Desert, another Game Guru third-person shooter developed by Superb Games Inc. that was released in March of this year. This one is actually a fair amount better than Ivan vs. Nazi Zombies as the game does make use of at least an extended range on the AI in which you can touch off the enemy and they will actually shoot back. Of course, this does not change the fact that this game is basic, unprofessional, buggy, broken, and virtually unplayable and is not what one consider a game as there is absolutely no enjoyment to be had whatsoever. This abomination has been brought to us by Superb Games Inc, and I would like to draw your attention to the game's recommended hardware specs as it would seem that even my computer with its 1080 Ti might be underpowered as this game recommends a Titan X, 32GB of RAM, and an i7-6950X. That's phenomenal, absolutely incredible. The next on our list is The Dark Tales of Katarina, a strategy RPG by Guardian Superb Game Inc that was released in May of 2017. Now, this game is unable to enter full screen, has no graphics options of any kind, is buggy and broken as anything I've ever seen, and is ultimately exceptionally dull with bland graphics, incomplete and uninspired UI, and no mouse support. Uh, even if you do happen to have a controller, I would recommend avoiding this game like the plague. Even playing it for a few minutes, I found the game play irritating, along with the lack of options and the sudden severe drop in frame rates over such an incredibly basic game. Throw in the exceptionally poor English translation on top of it, and this thing was headache-inducing. But the reason why I bring all three of these games to your attention is the fact that they are all made by the same developer. Yes, the developers of Ivan vs. Nazi Zombies managed to sneak their way back onto the Steam storefront and are continuing to post their cheaply generated games in order to keep up their harvest of Steam trading cards, grey market sales, and residuals from others farming cards on their products. Now, Ivan vs. Nazi Zombies had a sequel titled Return of Ivan vs. Zombies that was attempted to be greenlit under the pseudonym Superb Games Inc., the same developers behind Storm in Desert, which did manage to find its way onto the Steam storefront, bypassing Valve's ban on the developers and allowing them to continue releasing their junkware and peddling it to Valve's customers. 
In addition to that, the Dark Tales of Katarina and Storm in Desert share the same support email address in spite of them being developed by supposedly different people. And then on top of that, throw in yet another game titled Anime Berry Match 3 by Siberia Games, a mobile game match 3 that is set to unlock on the Steam storefront August 24th. Except Siberia Games is in fact the same developer as the others, merely posting under yet another developer pseudonym. Now, this was brought to my attention by Mellow Online and Surviolent Death from the Sentinels of the Store, and Mellow Online has stated in regards to Valve that they're open to the idea of developers wanting a new start. However, if it's clear that developers are using this to abuse the system and have sinister intentions behind name changes, then Valve will apparently take action against them. Except that this sort of behavior is not one that I would attribute to someone with good or even positive intentions. A person looking for a fresh start does not make three separate developer accounts in order to continue to obfuscate who you really are. It is a buffer zone in order to allow yourself to keep doing what it is that you are doing. This direct obfuscation is as dishonest as a fake review, attempting to perpetuate a lie in order to deliberately mislead and dupe consumers. By their own actions and by the quality of their products, they have shown that they are not deserving of a second, third, and fourth chance with these different pseudonyms, and what they do deserve is to be kicked to the curb yet again. Over 200 games were released in the first week of August alone, and the vast majority of it was junk like these games, clogging up the store pages and decreasing visibility for newer, legitimate developers from gaining the attention they deserve, while at the same time duping some customers out of money that they don't deserve. This sort of behavior is abhorrent in the extreme, and yet one more reason not to bother shopping for games on Steam. As always, please do let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha, and I'll see you next time.